Good morning, everybody. Uh, this is my first video I've done, so please be gentle with me. Uh, I go by Hippos on Discord as well as YouTube. Uh, again, this is my first video. I'm making it about uh, the Justin Posey Beyond the Map's Edge treasure hunt. I wanted to make the video because I have some thoughts about the end of the hunt that I just need to get out of my head. Uh, so the important disclaimer at the beginning, I am not currently holding a box of treasure, so I'm not complaining or I'm not I'm not claiming to have solved the uh poem in its entirety or anything like that. Uh, I wanted to actually talk about the end of the poem and like what the final solution would be. Obviously, we have to start at the beginning and work consecutively through to the end. Uh, so my next video would actually cover the first part of the poem or the uh, first actionable clue, as you might call it. But for this one, I wanted to talk about how we might end this thing. So I hunted a little bit for the Forest Fen treasure back in the day. Uh, I was not, you know, one of the the main hunters, if you will, or the, I, I wasn't, people wouldn't have known who I was. I did watch, you know, videos by Amy Seeks and K-Pro and Mike uh, back in the day and uh, went out a few times and looked for it. Enough that I, you know, was like many other people, rather disappointed by the ending and not knowing the ending. Uh, but I only bring that up to mention in Forrest Fenn's poem, or his treasure hunt, which was wonderful, it was generous, it was a lot of fun. Uh, there were, I think most people agree, a couple things that were really difficult about it, things that made it go for a long time, and that might have been on purpose. But uh, really, for me, it was the beginning and the end. So the beginning of the poem, like uh, I think Justin Posey talked about in the Netflix documentary, uh, was where warm waters halt. And there's a billion places where warm waters halt, and that was open to a lot of interpretation. The other was the end, where you come to uh, the blaze, or the ending part of it. And the, the fact that there may or may not have been a blaze uh, still standing. So. Uh, a lot of people, you know, had a lot of difficulty with that. And in particular, we've learned through uh, everything Justin's told us that he had a lot of issues. He specifically says he didn't like the idea of the blaze. And so what else has he told us about the ending of his treasure hunt? He said uh, that there isn't a blaze. He said that the poem teaches you or narrows it down to a specific area. Uh, he said, when people asked him, is it buried or not, he even said, if you solved the poem, it wouldn't matter. That, to me, tells me it's a very exact location. And then even more recently, uh, in the Twitter X space uh, thing with his friend, Tyler Taylor, uh, he mentioned that it brings you to an area the size smaller than a typical American kitchen, Right. So uh, hardly the first person here to, to say that all together kind of implies the possibility of this being a GPS solve. All right. Something else to add to that, uh, pretty well known that Justin Posey and a bunch of other people were actively trying to use GPS to solve Forrest Fenn's poem. So the, uh, the keywords there, they were calling them either homophones or kangaroo words. In other words, when you use... If you see the word four in the poem, that stands for the number four. Uh, you know, uh, if you... Grab six numbers, at least, out of that poem that would take us to a specific location. All right. uh, I want to talk about, oh, and then most recently, actually, K-Pro and Mike, they had a video where they talked about... Um, I believe it was a Discord user, Aratus, uh, who who talked about how in in Justin's treasure hunt, can you find what look lives in time? Time may actually li what lives in time may actually suggest GPS coordinates itself. Uh, even without that, I just think the fact that he's told us how this end suggests strongly it could be. GPS coordinates. So I've come up with a way that we could actually get GPS coordinates 
without having to get all of those numbers uh, from one poem. Because frankly, you look at this poem uh, to me, and I don't see, you know, at least six obvious numbers in an order. Uh, that, and, it, you know, if you were to just grab six numbers off of the Beyond the Maps, uh, Maps Edge poem, it, you would just get a place. And why would you need all of this? Where is the going consecutively from clue to clue? He said things like people have figured out the at least the first half of the stanza, and I don't see any numbers coming out of there very well. So anyways, I don't think that there's anything to suggest you can pull six numbers in an order out of this. So how could it be GPS? So that's what I wanted to talk about. So um, here, first of all, if you haven't used this yet, it's a pretty useful program. It's called acscdg.com. Uh, just it uses a Google map, but you can overlying, uh, you can like draw overlying on it. As you see here, up here, uh, it's showing you the exact latitude and longitude of where my mouse is at any given time. And I can scroll in and out. I can draw lines. Uh, you can draw lines or um, circles using it. So I, I find it very useful. I learned about this during the Utah treasure hunts. Shout out to them. Uh, so what I'm zooming in here, what I'm actually going to do here is show you how using the method I was thinking about how we could have solved Forrest's poem if he wrote it that way, All right? So this is Yellowstone National Park. We're not getting into whether or not it was at Nine Mile Hole or not. We're just playing on the assumption that it was at Nine Mile Hole. All right, so zooming in here uh, to the area of Nine Mile Hole. All right, so this is... This is Nine Mile Hole. You can see Fens Rock from above right here. If you don't know what that is, look up Fens Rock. Uh, it's the one that was supposed to presumably tell us how to where to cross the river. And then the uh, presumed location of the treasure was back here. And these very twisted and tangled uh, woods, which last week, actually, I had the opportunity to go back and is quite the disaster <laughs> disaster zone here. So uh, anyways, what I wanted to show you is, let me clear everything here. Draw your attention up here to the left corner where it's showing the latitude and longitude. And uh, what you can see is, as you go through this whole area, those of the latitude, 44 and 38 stay constant. And so do 110 and 56 on the other side. Actually, it covers pretty large area from, uh, uh, I'll just do it roughly, from about here to here to here to here. Uh, this whole square, sorry about that, uh, roughly here, this large square, um, which you can see is about a square mile, uh, roughly. As you move through this whole square, you watch those numbers, the, the through this entire thing, it's 4438, and it's 110, 55, or, uh, 55 in that region. So what that means is, coming and zooming into here, if we knew on Forest Poem that we were supposed to start at Madison Junction, take it in the canyon down, and then cross at... The, at this rock here, that's all we would have needed to know if the last, the next part of the poem gave us two numbers. Let's say that poem gave us the numbers 50 and 19. Well, as we could see here, 50 and 19 would have brought us to right there. We could have zoomed in. You may have, uh, there may be maybe some concerns you might have about how accurate this is, and I'll prove to you, uh, hopefully, by, at the end of this, how it can give us an exact location uh, down to definitely in a kitchen size. The, the key to this, to getting this, I'll show a little bit later, but um, the either one of these, latitude or longitude, cover a large swath of, of territory. So if you actually just look at the area that's covered in this latitude ending in 
uh, 50 and ending in 19. It's about a 70 by 100 foot rectangle. So you get a big rectangle of area. But as I'll show you later with Gaia or Onyx and those things, that last number you can actually make a decimal point. So 50 covers a wide area, but 50.00 is a very specific area uh, that the accuracy of our phones uh, and the, an app like Gaia gets you to somewhere between 7 to 16 feet as the kind of narrowed plus or minus 7 to 16 feet. Okay. Uh, and that is roughly the size of an American kitchen, I would say. So uh, that's how Forest Fen could have shown us the um, the location using just two uh, numbers in the end because the rest of the poem took us to an area, uh, kind of a specific region or a, I don't know, a uh, uh, maybe a sacred space uh, that wonder is guarding. So moving on to Justin's in the Beyond the Maps Edge poem, it takes us through and I'll, I'll have some other thoughts on what these different clues could be. But at some point, you arrive uh, beyond the reach of Time Swift Race to this sacred space guarded by wonder. So what I'm proposing is, if you had simply two more numbers contained in this last paragraph, it could take you, as long as this sacred space was somewhere like say a, a hiking loop or like a trail loop or a, a region or an area uh, that, that it took you to. All you need is two numbers and you can come up with an exact, very specific location. All right. Um, I will be showing you the proof for that in a second, but just to kind of harp on it a little bit more, talk about an example of what those could be. All right. So, uh, Coming here, sorry. All right, uh, so what I have here is his poem, um, After We Guard This Sacred Space. Just as an example of the region, I would think just if it would make sense to me that those numbers would be at the end of the poem. So truth rests not in clever minds. Think of if we've gotten anything uh, as clues that might be a number in that. Well. Justin has harped on and on about AI and uh, kind of the concerns that AI brings up, the worries that it can bring up. And uh, he also gave us the number 42 on the taillight of his truck. And so far, the only thing he was willing to say about that taillight when he was asked about it was he said, uh, basically he said, well, I'm not going to uh, go too much into detail about that, but... Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy is a great movie, or a great book, excuse me. Uh, the book is, the movie's pretty good too. Uh, so, it, just the Too Long Didn't Read or Cliff Notes version of uh, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy and the number 42, there's an ancient civilization. They build a, a really advanced computer called Deep Thought, and they ask it, what's the answer? Sorry, I don't actually know this. Uh, it's the ultimate answer to life, the universe, and everything, or something similar like that. It says, I need time, I need seven and a half million years, so they come back after seven and a half million years, and it gives the answer 42. But more importantly than that, it goes on to talk about, uh, but the, what you really need is the right question, and it says someday it will design that computer that will tell us the question, and if you keep learning about it, the uh, that computer turns out to be the planet Earth, right? And then towards the end of it, uh, this is spoiler alerts. Read the book for once in your life. Uh, the to the end at the very beginning of the book, the Earth gets blown up. Therefore, they're not able to get the question, right? And then there's uh, the people who built the Earth are. Uh, Big reveal is the, they're the mice <laughs> on the earth. So all of our little lab rats and mice are the people that um, that built the earth supercomputer. They really want the question, but it's revealed kind of at the end that 
they're not they don't really care about truth they say they even mention truth specifically they don't care about truth they want an answer to sell to the people back home in like a game show or like a rea- a talk show they want to go on uh, late night television and tell everyone how they found it and whatever so there's a whole big uh, kind of running joke about how the answer is 42 uh, but you don't have the question and frankly the people who ask don't care uh, what the actual question is they just want something to to tell everyone so coming back to that truth rests not in clever minds so if the clever minds is the ai and the truth rests not in clever minds this line this whole line could simply mean 42 right which then means you need to take not entangled twisted finds and come up with a number another number for that all right uh, all right, so the next thing I'm going to do is show you an example of that closer to home here and to show you how my dog and I were able to find a number or find something my wife hid from us. So uh, my wife, who's real and definitely exists, but didn't want to be on this recording, uh, she she went and hid something out at the park at a at a big park here in uh, Arizona and we and gave us only two numbers 42 and 13 and we're going to see if using just 42 and 13 and I'm not trying to say not entangled twisted finds means 13 we just picked that one uh, but 42 13 we're going to see if that might be able to take us to an exact location all right so uh, here is Luna Got to make sure both of these are playing. Yep. Uh, so here on the right, we have Luna. Uh, sorry, the videoing done by me was not great. She's our dog that we have trained to sniff for copper, bronx, or bron- bronze, aluminum, uh, anodized titanium, but she really only wants to sniff poles, so it isn't working. Uh, and then on the left here, we have a recording from the Gaia app. So what you see here is, uh, and I could have shown you on a map, but this entire park exists within the confines of the first two numbers being 3315 on latitude and for longitude being 111 and 39. Yes, you can find the park. I don't live at it. That's fine. Uh, But our goal is to get this to 42 and this to 13. So we're walking here along. And as we come to it, they may not be perfectly synced, uh, but you'll forgive me for that, I'm sure. All right. So uh, as we approach 42, and you can see if you get specific enough points, 41.5 is a very specific number as you go here. All right. So that's for that one. Oh, we reached 42, it looks like. Um, perfect. And now we're headed out to 13. And right as we get to 13, oh, we get the book my wife placed out in the middle of this field for us. And as I stand there, you'd see I'll walk in a circle. It kind of moves around. It's, you know, it's not exactly, but you see it says it's plus minus seven feet. And if you actually look it up, GPS on a, on a iPhone is thought to be good to uh, 16 square feet. Right, so plus or minus seven feet gets you there. So uh, that's my proposal on a way uh, that this poem could end. All right, so uh, take a look at your areas that you're doing and seeing if you can't figure out a 42 and the other number or, or, or whatever numbers you like in it. And then for my next video, if I do one, I will do the um, beginning, which is my thoughts on how we can know where the thing starts. Because I do think that was the other thing Justin was trying to fix with us. He was trying to fix the end, make it specific, and trying to fix the beginning, give us a direct spot. All right. Thanks for watching.